In this video, we are going to discuss how to get cheap Facebook ad clicks. Like any advertising medium, it costs money to place ads on the site. You need those ads to make money though, and without them, you will likely stall and be unable to make the money you want to make. Facebook ads can be expensive, and some people never see a cost per click CPC that is lower than 25 cents. However, it is possible to see ridiculously cheap clicks that will get you traffic and advertising benefits with little money spent. Bootstrapped startup businesses need cheap clicks so that they can get the results that they want. It's important to understand that you can't directly control clicks. Facebook does a lot of the work for you, but it's possible to keep that traffic directed within Facebook. This step-by-step -step guide will help you get the cheapest clicks possible and you will walk away with a little more advertising behind you and a heavier wallet. Step 1. Keep the traffic within Facebook. The point of monetizing a Facebook page is so you keep your traffic within Facebook. When you do this, it means that people are interested in your ads and are staying on the site. This is good news for Facebook, but it can also be great news for you. Your clicks will be much cheaper and you'll get traffic directed to your fan page. When this happens, you are likely to get more likes and attention. Step 2. Broaden your demographic but narrow interests. This part is tricky. You want your ads to be targeted and you want your traffic to be relevant. However, Broadening your demographic while narrowing your interests can result in penny clicks. A broader demographic would simply mean that you increase your age range, location, sex, and gender. Narrowed interests would mean taking your interests down from a few categories to just one category. This method can be manipulated to suit whatever your needs are. You can choose English speakers over a certain age, and then you can choose a set of no more than 100 keywords and interests. Step 3. You need good photos for your ad. The art of having good photos for your ad is incredibly important. A good photo that is tasteful and relevant can make all the difference. Do a little research to see what type of photo works best for your niche. Celebrity photos are always a winner and they can be used for a variety of advertisement purposes. People are more likely to click on celebrity ads. Facebook won't offer you low CPC until you can prove that they can make money from you. That means you need really good ads that make money and that starts with having good photos. Step 4 raise your click-through rate. Your CTR or click-through rate is important for getting low cost per click CPC. When you have a higher percentage of people clicking your ads then you also have lower costs. Why does this work? Because you are increasing traffic and thus revenue so that Facebook can afford to offer you a lower cost for ads. Remember Lower CPC is a result of higher CTR. This is great for you, Facebook, and your fans. Step 5. Analyze often and repeat the process. Analyzing the process and repeating it often is an important part of any marketing campaign. You need to reevaluate and see what works in order to get results you want. Your click-through rate can be increased and your total cost can be decreased much further once you start an advertising campaign with Facebook. Once you've started advertising, you will see demographic information and then you can narrow things down a bit more. Once you trick Facebook, you can essentially get the low CPC that you want the most. Step 6. Beware of Facebook being sneaky. Facebook can be sneaky. 
If you switch to CPM, then be prepared to be hit with a higher CTR and CPC. Facebook notices that they can keep giving you high traffic and CTR without lowering your CPC. This method is sneaky and it can seem like a good idea at first, but it will make you broke. It's not any better than just paying moderate CPC prices in the first place. It's best to work on getting lower penny CPC. Step 7. International clicks are cheap, but not always worth it. International clicks are cheap because they are from areas with lower income. These people are less likely to buy anything at all, and they can just inflate your total costs in the long run. Not all international clicks are negative though, but you should watch out for what audiences you are targeting. Be sure to set it to all English speakers so that you have a higher chance of those cheap international clicks converting well. Step 8. Use Sponsored Story Ads These are not the same as promoted posts. These are ads that are made from your posts and placed on sidebars. Sponsored story ads are cheap because they are often text-based, but they can bring in a lot of traffic to your page directly. Not only does this little trick provide a very cheap CPC, but you also get viral attention and traffic. These are definite wins for you, and your audience feels like it is part of an important community and more valued. Cheap ads aren't always the best, but if you want to save money, you can do so by following the eight steps above. These steps will help you get lower CPC rates and you'll get more traffic that is directed straight to your Facebook page. That's where the magic happens. Our course will contain all the information you need to make your Facebook marketing campaign a successful and fruitful journey for your business. It will help all of your goals be accomplished and reached in no time at all. We hope you learned something from this video and we hope that you will start your campaign to see how beneficial it really is to use Facebook monetization. In this video, we're going to talk about getting to know your buyers. In order to be able to sell your own products or to promote affiliate products, you have to understand your market and you have to understand the people you're going to promote these things to. If you don't understand who is on the other side, if you don't know the people who are looking at your offers, you can never really reach to them and you can never achieve the results that you could achieve if you take the time to get to know them. This is why I use a three-step formula that helps me get to know my target audience. This way, I don't sell blind. It's very important that you don't sell blind and that you sell to people you know and understand. I'm not just talking about knowing if your target audiences are male or female, 30 to 50 years old or something like that. I'm talking about details. I'm talking about getting into their heads and understanding what they think so that you can take advantage of that. If you know how to take advantage of that properly, your marketing is going to improve and you're going to make a lot more sales. This is why it's important to focus on this before we move on and start promoting. In the next video, we're going to talk about creating some custom Facebook audiences and we're going to dive into Facebook. But in this video, we're not going to go into Facebook. We're going to stay away from Facebook for now and then in the next videos, in the next couple of videos, we're going to dig deep and start looking into Facebook and audiences, taking what we're going to learn here and applying that to your Facebook marketing. Let's go ahead and start with step number one, which is find your competitors. So the first thing that we need to do is find some people. Actually, not people. We need to find some websites that we consider competitors. However, if you want to promote affiliate offers, then they don't really need to be competitors. 
The good thing about Facebook is that you don't need to compete with anyone directly, especially if you're promoting affiliate products. So we don't need to call them competitors. We just need to learn more about the products that we're going to sell, about the products that we're going to promote. And once we know more about them, we can have a better approach with our audience. Let's go ahead and get started with ClickBank. We're also going to take a look at JVZoo real quick, and then we're going to focus a little bit on Google Authority Sites. As we go on these websites, we're also going to do step number two. So we pretty much need to jump from step number one to step number two constantly to make sure we check all these things and we don't miss on anything. Once we get started on step number one with ClickBank, we have to jump on to step number two. Before we get to that, let's go with ClickBank. First, we're going to need to register a free account. As I already said, it's a free account, so you don't need to pay anything. The activation offer account is instant, so if you don't have one already, please go ahead and register. Once you do that, you're going to have this option over here that says Marketplace. So you want to click on that. Once you do, this page is going to open. If we scroll down here to Categories, we can see all the categories that exist on ClickBank. So let's say you're interested in promoting a product in the weight loss niche. You want to teach people how to lose weight or how to lose fat. In that case, you would go with the health and fitness category, and then you would select diets and weight loss. Now, we've got a bunch of products that are doing really well on ClickBank. We can also sort results by gravity. If we do this, ClickBank is going to sort these results, and they're going to show us what products are selling the best. Let me explain what gravity is. I can't really tell you for sure what it is because nobody knows. ClickBank keeps this a secret and they're not really revealing how this gravity number over here is calculated. But it's pretty much, it means the higher the gravity number is, the more affiliates are selling the product. So the more affiliates are making commissions with the product. Now, it doesn't mean that 323 affiliates are making commissions. We have no idea how many affiliates are selling this product, but it pretty much means the higher the number, the more sales affiliates are making. As you can see, the first one has a gravity of 323, the second one 230, and then 150, and so on. In this case, gravity is not really that important, but it can be useful when you select the product to promote just pay attention to the gravity and that's how you're going to find the products that sell the best and the products that are pretty much a sure win. If so many people, so many affiliates are making sales, then chances are you'll be able to make a lot of sales with these products as well. Okay, so that's it for ClickBank. You pretty much need to find a product that you either want to promote or product that you want to compete with. If you already had your own product on how to lose fat, then this website would pretty much be a competitor of yours. Now, if you just want to promote a website like the Fat Loss Factor, you want to promote their products as an affiliate, then you would also need to take a look at it to learn more about the people who land on this website. Let's go back to our mind map and see what step number two is. So, for ClickBank, and JVZoo competitors, we need to use a Google Keyword Planner. But before we head to Google Keyword Planner, let's take a look at JVZoo. JVZoo is very similar to ClickBank. As you can see, they've got categories over here. You just need to select the category. Let's say diets and weight loss again. If we do that, we're going to see we've got a bunch of products over here as well. If we opened one of these products, let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. As you can see, we get redirected to their homepage and the possibility to buy their product. 
while a lot of people use JVZoo, I don't really use it for this type of research that much simply because ClickBank is just a lot better and provides more information. Now, what I do use JVZoo for is when it comes to internet marketing products that are cheaper pretty much, if you want to promote make money online products, then JVZoo would be a pretty good place to do some research. Let's say you want to promote something about copywriting or maybe market research. Well, let's go with copywriting in this case. If you want to promote a product on copywriting, JVZoo has a couple of these products that are actually doing pretty well. What I use JVZoo for is to just see what these products are and to take a look at their copies and kind of learn more about the audience that these products are targeting and also see the approach that they are taking. Let's say you found a website, you found a competitor, or you found the website that you want to promote. You found the product that you want to promote. So what do you do next? Well, it doesn't matter if you find the product on ClickBank or on JVZoo. The next step would be to use the Google Keyword Planner to do some research. Let's go ahead and do that. To open this Google Keyword Planner, you need to go to google.com and just search for Keyword Planner. You do need to register an account, an AdWords account with them. In the past, they used to have another keyword tool that didn't really require you to have an AdWords account, but now you're going to have to register an AdWords account before you can use this tool. Once you do that, you actually have quite a few great options that you can take advantage of. Over here, you can use keywords to search or you can use the link of your competitor or the link of the affiliate product that you want to purchase. In this case, fatlossfactor.com. This is why it's important to find these products on JVZoo and ClickBank because we want to use their URL. We pretty much want to spy on them and see what keywords they're using and how much people are paying for the keywords that are related to their websites. Actually, I don't want to paste it there. I want to paste it over here where it says your landing page. I want to select all locations, English, Google, negative keywords. I don't really want to touch any of these. Now we've got the possibility to customize our search, but that's not actually something that I want to do at this moment. I just want to see as many keywords as possible. Once you enter the landing page, you just click get ideas and you're going to get ad group ideas, but you need to switch over to keyword ideas because this is where you get a bigger list. Let's take a quick look at these keywords and, and what they offer and what you can learn from them. First, we've got the keyword, the actual keyword, and then we've got the average monthly searches. As you can see, you've got a little description over here. If you want to learn more about that, just come over here on this question mark and read what the average monthly search number is. I'm just going to go ahead and read the first sentence. The average number of times people have searched for this exact keyword based on the targeting settings that you have selected. So pretty much how many times people searched for this keyword during a month. Not really that complicated. So 20 people have searched for this keyword. Next, Google tells us what the SEO competition is. If it's tough to rank high or if it's not. Since we're going to use Facebook, this is not really something we care about. That's actually one of the great things about Facebook because even though it might be hard to rank for one of these keywords on Google with Facebook, it's really not that hard. It doesn't matter how hard these keywords are to rank on Google. For Facebook, they're pretty much all the same, and that's the good thing about it. Next, we've got average cost per click. 
this is really key when it comes to finding profitable products to promote. What does this tell us? Well, the average cost per click tells us how much people are willing to pay for one click when they advertise on Google. You know these advertisements that appear on Google when you search for a keyword? I'm pretty sure you know about that, right? You've seen those? For those ads, people pay anything from a couple of cents to a couple of dollars every time a person clicks on those ads. If Google tells us that somebody's willing to pay almost $3, $2.71 every time one person clicks on their website when they search for this keyword, then that means that the person who's paying almost $3 is making a lot of money with this keyword. That's a good thing for us. What we want to do is find keywords that have high monthly searches. Keywords that people are interested in. Now, I usually like to avoid general keywords like weight loss. Let's just go down a little bit and see something that's more targeted. Maybe belly fat. That's a little more targeted, right? You know that people want to lose their belly fat and not just weight loss in general. They know what they want. They want to lose their belly fat. We've also got diets. People who know what they want to get on a diet. And then we've got fast weight loss. People who are interested in losing weight fast, which means they're prepared to do pretty much whatever it takes to lose weight fast. These are all good keywords. And we can also see how much people are willing to pay for these keywords. This keyword, fast weight loss, as I already said, people are willing to do pretty much anything to achieve this fat weight loss. Since advertisers are paying $2.50 per click, which means that they're actually making a lot of money with this keyword. I assume it's kind of easy for them to tell people how to achieve weight loss really fast. That's why they're paying so much just for one click. What we want to do now is grab these keywords. Just grab a couple of these maybe five to ten of these keywords. What I'm going to do is open my text edit file. Here we go. You can also open Notepad if you're on Windows. I'm going to go ahead and just insert a couple of these keywords that I like. So let's say belly fat. For this keyword people are paying about a dollar per click which is pretty good. I usually select everything over a dollar per click. That's a good keyword for me. And this one also has 50,000 monthly searches, which means that there are a lot of people interested in losing belly fat. Next, we've got quick weight loss and fast weight loss. I can also insert those keywords in there. Quick weight loss, fast weight loss. We're going to use these keywords on Facebook later on. So this is why we're actually extracting a couple of them. Now, you don't need to obsess with this too much. Just select a couple of these keywords and you're going to see how easy it is to use pretty much any of these keywords to find what you need on Facebook. Don't obsess too much about what keywords exactly to select. If the average cost per click or CPC is over a dollar and there's a decent amount of monthly searches, like over 15,000 searches, then you can go ahead and just copy and paste that keyword in your notepad file or text edit, whatever you're using. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy one more. Let's say easy ways to lose weight or ways to lose weight. Yeah, let's go with ways to lose weight. Okay, so I have four keywords, which are more than enough for what we're going to do on Facebook next. This is how you use a competitor's website. However, if you want to promote this product as an affiliate, then they're not really your competitors, but this is how you use their website to get this juicy information about the keywords that are highly related to this landing page. As you can see, there are some really profitable keywords and keywords that people are willing to spend money on. This is really good because if you target these buyer keywords, then chances are your conversions are going to be higher when you try to promote something on Facebook. 
That's how you use the Google Keyword Planner. What we want to do next is go to Google and we want to use Google to find some authority sites in our niche. And then we want to use Quantcast to research these authority sites. Okay? When you want to find authority sites in your niche, let's say the weight loss niche, pretty much all you need to do is insert a keyword related to your niche. We can also use one of these keywords. So let's say quick weight loss. And we want to find a couple of products. Also, as you can see, a lot of people are running ads related to quick weight loss. If we were to click on this result, the person advertising would have to pay. How much? Quick weight loss. Let's find that keyword. So the person would have to pay over $2.60 over $2.60 for my click. Now, of course, maybe they're not gonna pay $2.60 for my click. It depends on the location. They're gonna pay $10, for example, if you're from the US, and they may pay less if you're from another country. The thing is, they're going to pay a lot of money if you go ahead and click on their link. That means that these keywords are buying keywords and they are profitable. So if you target these keywords, chances are your conversion rates are going to be higher. Let's find a website that looks like an authority site. Let's see. Health.com. Not really what we're after. We don't want to find a link like this. That's really long. We want to find a website that ends with .com. No slash and then another page. So let's see. Free diets. Healthy diets for quick weight loss. Let's grab this website. Now, it doesn't mean that you're always going to get data from the website that you grab. So we're going to use Quantcast. Quantcast.com. Here's what this website is doing. It's pretty much getting you inside your audience and it provides audience inside. How old the people are how who go on a specific website how much money they're making per year information like that let me go ahead and paste the url that i just copied and paste it again not sure why they didn't open this time okay here we go so here is this website that we selected softmineine.co.uk if we scroll down we could actually get some US demographics over here. But the bad thing about Quantcast is that it doesn't provide demographics for all websites. So it might take you a little bit of time before you find an authority website that you can get this information on. Quick weight loss diet plan. Maybe it's going to give us something more related. Women and home or slimming solutions. Let's try Slimming Solutions. Now, all these websites are co.uk, and that's probably why we're not getting U.S. demographics information. So, yeah, I guess I shouldn't be searching for co.uk websites if I want to get U.S. demographics. So, let's see if I can find something.com. Uh, perhaps one of these ads, like lighterlife.com. As I already mentioned, it does take a little bit of time before you actually find the websites that you can get information from. So again, another one that we can't really get a lot of information from. Now, let me try and change this to .com. Maybe that's the problem. So I'm just getting results that are related to UK. We can also try changing the keyword. Maybe something more general like weight loss and then maybe we can find something related to this. For example, if you would want to promote weight loss for women, then you can select womenshealthmagazine.com. I'm going to copy and paste that over here. And let's see if we can find something on this website. We should be able to find something, I think. It's quite a popular website, it seems. And here we go. So we do have a lot of information on this website. First, we get like unique visitors and stuff like that, but we really don't care about that. 
What we care about are the demographics. Now, obviously, this is a women's health magazine. So there's going to be more females searching on the website. Then we can see that this website is quite popular for people between 18 and 24 years and 25 to 34, 34 to 44, and the rest are not really into this website. We also have some information about the amount of money that people make and people who visit this website make. Most people make from zero to 50K per year. Most people have a college degree. We can also see that they are African American and Hispanic mostly. So that's pretty much the information that we can get from a website. We can understand who the visitors are and how old they are so that we know how to address them. Another thing is if they have kids or they don't. So most of them do not have kids. It's going to take some time before you find some of the websites that are useful. What you can do is just search for these related keywords. So just click on weight loss exercises and then you can try fitnessmagazine.com and see what the target audience is for these fitness magazines. What I'm going to do in the next video is connect the dots between Quantcast and what we've done in this video and Facebook. Right now, maybe you don't really understand how to use this when you advertise on Facebook. But for now, just keep in mind what your demographics are. Just try to understand the people who are coming to your competitors' websites or to websites similar to what you want to promote. In one of the next videos, I'm going to explain exactly how to take massive advantage of Quantcast and also the authority websites on Google and to really get a lot of traffic from exactly the people who visit these websites. Let's say fitnessmagazine.com. I'm going to show you how to get traffic from exactly the people who visit this website. That's really powerful because you can know exactly who they are. You visit Quantcast on fitnessmagazine.com. You learn who they are, mostly female, 18 to 24, 25 to 34. They have no kids. Once you know who they are, you can actually target this specific website. Well, not exactly, but you can target the people who come on this website on Facebook and then promote your stuff to them. So that's really, really powerful. Keep in mind how to use Quantcast. Make sure you understand what Quantcast does. Then in the next video, actually one of the next videos, we're going to take a look at how to connect Quantcast with Facebook custom audiences and how to take massive advantage of this and get really high conversions. This would be step number one and step number two. Finally, we've got step number three, which is get personal. For step number three, what I recommend doing is just taking some time to do research on websites like yahooanswers.com or forums related to your niche. Let's say quick weight loss forum. Then you find some forums that are related to how to lose weight quickly. Maybe you could do weight loss forum because that's more general. So then you can find some forums that are related to weight loss. What you want to do is register on these forums and just read what other people are saying. Try to understand what their biggest problems are. For example, you could start a thread on one of these forums and you can ask people what their biggest problem is. For example, what foods they would want to eat but can't eat and stuff like that. Just stuff that you can later use in your marketing to target them. You could also use Yahoo Answers to ask your questions. For example, what you hate most about losing weight. Then you can get an insight into their problem. Get an insight into your target audience's mind and understand exactly what their problem is when it comes to losing weight. Now, of course, you can also use this for promoting products on how to make money online. What's your biggest challenge when it comes to making money online? What's your biggest challenge when it comes to getting dates? Stuff like that. Questions related to the niche that you want to promote. This is a long video actually, but we've gone through a lot. So we've learned 
how to find competitors, and then we've learned how to use the Google Keyword Planner tool to find related keywords and see if the niche you want to target has buyers in it. Let's actually do an example. Let's say you want to go with a niche that's a little more unusual. Perhaps you want to go with how to make a potato gun. That's an unusual niche, right? How to make a potato gun? You want to search for ideas again, but you don't want to insert that as a landing page or insert that as a keyword. Keyword ideas. We go over here. We want to look at the average CPCs. As you can see, people are not really willing to spend money on learning how to create potato guns, which means that this niche and this keyword is not really profitable. So you don't really want to go with something like this that doesn't have a high CPC. You only want to go with things that have higher CPCs because that means your target audience is ready to buy. When you get to know your target audience, I guess the most important question would be to answer if they are in the mood to buy or not. If they're not, then you should drop that right away. If they are, then you should continue researching, learning more about it. Continue using Yahoo Answers and forums to learn more about their exact problems and to actually even talk with people who are your target audience and learn what their problems are. Forums and Yahoo Answers are very simple tools, but they're actually really powerful marketing tools. Marketing companies use surveys and they pay people to talk to them about what their problems are. You can also do this for free on forums and Yahoo Answers, and you're pretty much going to get the same results that the marketing companies are getting. So that's really powerful, and I hope you're going to take advantage of this. Now, it might take a little bit of time to do that on forums, but it's going to pay off because the information that you're going to learn about your target audience is going to help you a lot in the future when you start creating your marketing campaigns on Facebook. So we're going to wrap up this video up because it's almost 30 minutes long. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to create custom audience with the help of Social Lead Freak or Facebook Lead Chef. Okay, so let's get to that. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Social Lead Freak to collect custom audiences for your Facebook advertising campaigns. I'm also going to explain what custom audiences actually are. But before that, what I'm going to do is go to Facebook and show you an example of how I want to use this tool. We've got the keywords that we extracted in the previous video. Let's pick one of these keywords. For example, fast weight loss. We want to just search for fast weight loss over here. You're going to see once we do this, we're going to stumble upon quite a few products and groups and fan pages. Let's go with fast weight loss products. This page has 3,000 users. Now, this one has 3.5 thousand users. So let's go with this one. Okay, here we go. We don't want to like it right now. We just want to see what this page is all about. It looks like this page is pretty much a dud. Maybe the likes from this page are bought because we don't see a lot of people commenting and liking any of these posts. That tells us that maybe the likes for this page were bought and these people are not really interested in losing weight. As you can see, there are just a couple of comments and likes. Not really that much. We do have a couple more here, like 10, pretty much the same guy just commenting. So not really something that's really great that we want to target. Let's try again with maybe another page. Let's go with just weight loss. We're going to get pages with more likes. Here it is. This page has 140,000 likes. As you can see, there's a bit more activity over here. A lot of people commenting and liking. So that's pretty good. Okay, so this looks like a good page. Let me explain what we can do with this page. The good thing about Facebook custom audiences is that Facebook pretty much lets you target any person you want. For example, if you want to target this guy, Derek, 
you can do that. You can just copy his Facebook page ID. Let's open it in a new tab. We can just copy his Facebook username and then with our ad, we can target this person. We can specify exactly which people we want to target. That's really the powerful thing about Facebook custom audiences. Now, if we were to do this manually, it would take us a very long time. It would be very time consuming. You would probably have to spend your entire day to grab like 200 people. But with the help of a tool like Social Lead Freak, we can automate all of these. We can extract the active people from pretty much any page on Facebook and then we grab their Facebook IDs. We can add them as our custom audience and then target them and show them ads that are related to their interests. So obviously, people who liked this pages and those who commented on a page like this are interested in losing weight. So it would be perfect if we could show them an ad over here that is related to losing weight, right? That's the perfect audience, the best type of audience you can get. This is why social lead freak and custom audiences are such a great way to get cheap clicks and also get highly targeted traffic, really the highest possible targeted traffic out there. Now, I need to explain something about Social Lead Freak. At first, you might think it's a bad thing, but it's actually not. As you probably know, a lot of people sometimes like pages like this, even though they are not really interested in it. Maybe some of their friends just asked them to like it, or they liked it for other reasons, even though they're not really interested in it. Because of that, it would actually be a bad thing to target all of these likes. Social Lead Freak actually doesn't allow you to extract all of these likes. It only extracts the people who commented or actually liked posts on this page. Even though that means you're going to get a smaller number of people, you're going to get a number of people that is very highly targeted. That's actually even better than just targeting a bunch of people who might not really like this page. Let's actually jump in. Open Social Lead Freak and get started. So we can target by groups, events, places, pages, and posts. What I like to do is target by groups, events, and pages. I don't really use places, posts, and people. So let's get started with groups. Let's say we can use one of these keywords. Let's say we're interested in extracting groups related to belly fat. Copy, paste it over there, and just press search. We're not always going to get great results. In case you didn't, you just need to change the keyword and keep searching until you get pages with a lot of users. This is actually pretty good. The first group that we have here has 957 members that we can extract. The second one, 800 members, 700. So yeah, this is pretty good. We can go ahead and start extracting. Once we found a group that we like and we think is relevant to what we want to promote, we can just go over here and click extract. Yeah, let's do that. Let's click extract. It's going to ask us where we want to save this. I'm just going to select desktop and I'm going to rename this to belly fat cure fans and save it. So now what I want to do is open it. Let me find it on my desktop. Here it is. Here we go. We've got these numbers now in Excel. You're going to see them. They're a little word weird, like 1E plus 14. That doesn't mean anything because when we uploaded this on Facebook, everything's going to be all right. As you can see, we've got 957 members that we can upload as our custom audience. So I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save it. What we want to do now 
is take a look at some of these pages. And I also want to show you how you can search by pages. Another really unique method of doing this is by targeting people who are experts in this niche. Is there like a famous person that you know that teaches about weight loss? I'm trying to think of somebody, but if you can't think of anybody, you can just go to Amazon.com. On Amazon, we can just look for books that are related to weight loss. Then what we want to do is look for authors that have some of these popular books with a lot of reviews. Here's one. We can also go to bestsellers and see if we can find something there. Let's click on bestseller. Then we could select weight loss. Let's see if I can find that. Let's go with self-help and then dieting. No, actually it's not here. Oh, so here we go. Health, fitness, and dieting. That's the one we want to go with. These are the best sellers. Now, let's go and select exercise and fitness, or maybe diet and weight loss. Here are the best sellers in this category. This one was written by William Davis. I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to go over here and just search for William Davis to see if this guy has liked a fan page or something that we can use. William Davis and his book. Not too many likes though. I guess a better bet would be to search for some person who's famous for giving advice on how to lose weight. Amazon is also a great way and you don't always have to pick the first book. You can also go with for example, Gwyneth Paltrow. So you could copy her name and then search for that on Facebook as well. Yeah, let's do that and see if we can find her book. Gwyneth Paltrow, it's all good. Let's see if we can find that. It looks like there's no page for that. Yeah, there's really no page for her book at the moment, but we can always target her page. Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm pretty sure people who liked her page are not interested in weight loss alone, so that might not be the best way to target this page. But if we go with William Davis and the title of his book, even though we only have like 2,000 people who liked it, this traffic would be extremely highly targeted. Pretty much the best type of traffic we can get. So what I'm going to do is copy the name of his page and then go back to Social Lead Freak. Let's see if we can find this page inside Social Lead Freak. Sometimes finding by the name of the page is not the best option. So we can just go and search for the keyword and it's going to find the page for us. Well, it should. And yeah, here it is. Now we can click Extract. Just right click anywhere and just click extract to get the CSV file with the members who are active on this page. Yes, let's proceed. It's going to process the post on this page and then it's going to grab the active people. We're not going to get 2,000, more 400 people on our list. Maybe we're going to get a couple hundred. But that's all right, because that's really highly targeted traffic. And that's just one of our custom audiences. We can also do this for pretty much all of the ebooks in Amazon that you see. You can search for all those ebooks and you can just add a hundred and then a hundred more for the next ebook. Just build your highly targeted custom audience like that. It's going to take a little bit of time but I don't think that's too much time considering the rewards that you can get. So Wheat Belly by William, I'm going to save that. And there we go. Uh, another way to do this is by events. Maybe this is not really applicable in the weight loss niche, but in the internet marketing niche, for example, if you see some people organizing webinars, you could target them. So you could just pick up that event and you could target the people who attended that event. There was a launch for Mike Fulsame and Andy Jenkins. 
let's try and see if we can find some webinars that Andy Jenkins did. This is the Video Boss by Andy Jenkins. The last product that he launched was called the Video Genesis. We could search for that. Video Genesis webinar. I think because this webinar was already held, we can't really find it at the moment. If you do follow people who are authorities in your niche, then there's a really high chance of seeing when they hold these events and these webinars. This is really the hottest type of traffic that you can get. For example, let's say there's a launch happening in the internet marketing niche and somebody's launching a new product. You want to promote it as an affiliate. The best way to do that is to grab the leads who said they're going to attend that webinar because this is really the hottest type of traffic you can find. It's the type of traffic that is ready to act at that moment. We know they're very active because they just signed up for the webinar because that's going to happen in a day or two. So it's really the hottest type of traffic and that's why you want to target these guys and you want to add them as your custom audience and then promote a product with your affiliate link. That's just an idea that you can take advantage of and really use when you promote this type of launch. Other than that, I think this is pretty much how you can use Social Lead Freak. You can target pretty much by just entering your keyword over here and then target by groups or you can also target by pages. By pages, you can always search for authority people in your niche or you can search by keywords like weight loss. It's quite simple to search for something like that. Now, when you search for a keyword like weight loss, because there are a lot of pages using this keyword, it's kind of a big keyword. It's going to take some time for Social Lead Freak to extract everything for you. Just wait a couple of minutes. You're going to get pages with great results and a lot of custom people that you can target. For some reason, this search has stopped. I guess that's one of the things that sometimes happens with Social Lead Freak. It doesn't really work as expected all the time. You might have to repeat a couple of actions to get re the results that you want. So while Social Lead Freaks works on this, I want to show you how to upload custom audiences. Let me go over here and I'm just going to type advertising. We want to click on advertising on Facebook. Obviously, you want to insert your credit card details, but for now, let's focus on adding custom audiences. We want to go to Power Editor over here. Let's click on it. Next, we want to click on Audiences. The first time that you're going to launch this, you're going to click on Audiences. You're actually going to get a pop-up and you're going to have to download some things. So just click Download once you get that pop-up. Now, because I already opened this earlier, I'm not getting the pop-up anymore. But when you do it for the first time, you're going to get that. So make sure you click download. Next, we click on create audience and then click custom audience. We're going to have the terms, which you just need to accept. Of course, read them. And if you agree, click accept terms. Next, we've got audience name. Let's go with the first group that we have the description. Weight Loss Williams. I don't really know what this name is, so I just keep this Williams. Next, I want to grab the file and I want to load it over here. So what I'm going to do now is just click Choose File and then select it. I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Okay, so I just selected the file and because this file is full of numbers, I want to select UIDs. Let's go with that and then click create. It's going to create your custom audience and 570 people. This has been uploaded, but it may take up to one hour for it to be available for targeting. So I'm going to wait for this to be available. And then I'm going to begin working and recording the next video in which I'm going to show you how you can target your custom audience. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, before I end this, let me tell you that I'm actually going to include another short video 
teaching you how you can use an alternative to Social Lead Freak. Well, I do think Social Lead Freak is a better application. It does cost a little bit more. There's a cheaper alternative to it, which I'm going to show you in the next video. So make sure you watch that to learn how to use that other tool, which pretty much does the same thing, though not as good as Social Lead Freak. But you can use it if you want to because it is a little bit cheaper. So I'll see you in the next video. Hey, welcome back. So before we get started with custom audiences and before we start setting up ads in Facebook, I need to show you how to create a Facebook squeeze page. If you've seen some squeeze pages integrated inside Facebook, you might think that's pretty hard to create and that you might have to hire a designer or a programmer to do that for you. Well, I mean, if you do that, it's going to cost a lot of money. But the good thing about it is that you don't actually have to. You can pretty much integrate any squeeze page that you have on any website inside Facebook with a very simple script. You don't even need to code or prepare a squeeze page for Facebook. All you need to do is pretty much redirect Facebook to one of your existing squeeze pages. I'm going to show you what I mean by that right away. But before we get to that, we do need to create at least one squeeze page. For this, I'm going to use Optimize Press. If you already have a squeeze page, you can use that. Or if you use another plugin, you can use that as well. For this video, I'm just going to show you how to do it with Optimize Press 2.0, which is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to create high converting landing pages, sales pages, and so on. As you can see, there are a couple of Optimize Press packages over here that you can get. I'll post a link below this video so that you can check this out. See if you want to purchase Optimize Press. If you have it already or if you have another script, then that's fine as well. You don't need to get Optimize Press, although it is a good and easy way to get started with squeeze pages and create them really fast. You're going to see exactly how fast the creation process is in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. This is a WordPress website that I have and I install Optimize Press on it as a theme. All I need to do is click on Optimize Press and then go here to Page Builder. So once we go there, we actually have a couple of options that we can choose from. As soon as it loads, we're going to see. Okay, first we need to name our page. Let's name this Squeeze Page FB. Actually, I'm going to remove this asterisk. I added that by mistake. Maybe Squeeze Page Weight Loss or maybe Squeeze Page belly fat because you created a custom audience related to belly fat. We can do something related to that and it's automatically going to create the permalink for you. After that, you need to select a blank page or a content template. You can also upload a page thumbnail, but this is completely optional. You don't actually need this for Facebook, so we can just leave this as is. Next, we can either select a blank page or a content page. In this case, I'm going to go with content page. Actually, I'm just going to click on content page so I can show you what you can choose from this. If we scroll down, you're going to see opt-in pages and you're going to see a bunch of squeeze page options that you can use with videos, without videos, just text, really a lot of options that you can use. Pretty much any of these can be used for Facebook. However, what I prefer to use is a blank page and then I proceed to step two. When I get here, I'm going to get a few good options. We've got landing page, so I'm going to select landing page and I'm going to proceed to step three you're going to see some really good looking landing pages that we can create for our Facebook squeeze page. Now you can always go back and use one of the opt-in pages that I've showed you. It's pretty much the same, really no big difference. In this case, 
I think I'm going to use one of these landing pages because they look really good. For some reason, the website is taking a while to load. So let's give it another second. All right, so here we go. Now we've got a couple of templates that we can select from. First, we need to select the template for the overall style of the page and then the template. We want to start editing within the live editor. We can select the landing page with full screen background or classic internet marketing style. Of course, we're going to go with the full background style. Next, we've got white box on a full background or black box on full background. I'm going to go with the white box in this case and I'm just going to click proceed to step four. All right, here we go. Now we've got to select the landing page background. We have a couple of options when it comes to this. We can select it from an image that already exists on this website, but I'd have to look through all these images in order to find the background in the pictures that you saw in the previous steps. So I think the best way to do this is to just find another image and then upload it. I'm going to pause the video while I find an appropriate background image. You can find one of these background images on a stock photo website. You can probably buy it for like $2 or so. I'm going to show you a good example of what a background image should look like. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I'm back. I have uploaded two images that we can use. The first one that is really widely used in the internet marketing squeeze page is a wallpaper of a beach, something that looks really nice and kind of calms you down. I'll explain the philosophy behind using that. First, let me insert into the post and then I'm going to go ahead and explain what the beach fuss is all about. A lot of marketers use it for internet marketing squeeze pages and also for other squeeze pages like weight loss. This is what the squeeze page looks like. Before we edit it, I just want you to clearly see what the squeeze page looks like. This would be the text over here and then the first name and email address and the button to get started. As you can see, this background is kind of calming. The reason why everybody uses it is because it is associated with the dream that people have to go on a tropical island. It can also be used for weight loss because they want to go there and they want to look good and they want to be relaxed. When they're skinny, they also look good. They feel good. So that's why people use it as a background for weight loss squeeze pages. Now, when it comes to make money online squeeze pages, I think it's pretty clear that everybody wants to be able to afford a vacation on a tropical island. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, another thing that you can use is something related to what you're doing, something related to losing weight. Let me go back and see if I can change the background. Here we go. Landing page background. I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to go to select file and the media library because I've already uploaded it. It's over here. I'm just going to select full size, then insert into post and click update. Now I'm going to come back and refresh this page. In my opinion, the squeeze page with the beach looks a little better, but this also looks pretty good. It's self-explanatory when it comes to losing weight. I think the beach kind of awakens their dream. So it's a little bit more powerful than having something that has like a green salad that nobody really wants to eat. In my opinion, the beach background is better, but this is not that bad either. So we can just stick with this for now. Now, let me show you how to edit this squeeze page and how to change some of the details over here. It's really simple. You just need to click on what you want to change. We don't really need a logo over here, so I'm going to remove that. Just remove that logo. Next, we can go ahead and change the headline. Discover how you can lose your belly fat in 21 days or less. Then, over here, we would say something related to that. You can easily lose all the fat around your belly 
by doing this simple five-step technique that has helped hundreds of people so far. Enter your name and email below for instant access. Then we can just click update feature. Okay, here we go. So now we just have first name and we pretty much need to copy and paste the form from our autoresponder. You need to pick up the HTML code from either Aweber or get response. Then copy and paste that over there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause my video and I'm going to log into my get response account. Then I'm just going to show you how to pick up the HTML code and paste it over here. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've logged into my get response account and we're going to need to create a new web form. I'm just going to go to create new. We actually don't need to design this at all. We can pretty much use anything because Optimize Press is going to optimize it for us. We really don't need to spend any time designing this. We just need to click next a couple of times and that's it. This part over here is actually quite important. The thank you page and the custom thank you page. We want to click custom thank you page. This is where you want to paste your thank you page URL. Usually, if you don't paste anything, most people just leave the default thank you page. If they do that, all they're going to see is a page where it says, thank you for subscribing. And that's it. I think that's a big waste of time. We want to select custom thank you page and we want to send them to an offer. This can be an affiliate offer or if you have your own product, you can send them to your own product. It's very, very important that you select custom thank you page and insert your affiliate link or your offer link, your product link, or whatever you have the seller promote. Insert it over here so that they get sent to the offer immediately after they subscribe. That gives them a chance to buy the product. And there's also a chance that you're going to get a commission if they do that. Well, actually, you're going to get a commission for sure if they do that. But I just wanted to say that there's a high chance of you getting a commission that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten if you were to leave them on your default thank you page. That's why the custom thank you page is so important. Now, in this case, I haven't prepared an affiliate offer, so I'm just going to type google.com. However, you're going to put your affiliate offer in there. I'm going to save this web form and then I'm going to click next step. I'm also going to click show HTML code. This is actually very important. Make sure you show the HTML code and you need to grab all these codes. You can actually just press control plus A or Command plus A if you're on a Mac. Then you need to copy it. Come back to Optimize Press over here and Integration Type. Hold on. Integration Type. Get Response. We're actually just going to choose Custom Form and we need to paste this over there. Just paste the code and then submit the form to a new window. We want to select this and that's pretty much it. Just update feature and we're done. So this is our squeeze page. We can now save it. Okay, let's come back over here and refresh the page. Just make sure everything looks okay and it does. Now, what we can do is grab this and post it on Facebook. Another thing you want to do is go to publish over here and then save and continue. If it's not published, nobody can access it other than you. We can view, view this again. We have to refresh the page because it's been published. So we want to refresh it so we can receive the correct link. Belly fat. Let's search for that page. Here we go. I'm going to click view and this is the link. I'm going to copy the link. 
Now, we need to go ahead back to Facebook and search for iframe. That's what we want to use. We want to go with static iframe, iframe tabs. So let's go ahead and select this. Okay, we want to go to app and we just want to install this. Add static HTML to a page. We obviously need to type this text in the box. I hope this is okay. Okay, it is. Now, we need to add this. Oh no, I want to skip it. And this is the iframe. It just says, welcome. We're going to change all of these. So we want to click Edit tab. And then we want to make some changes. Right now, we have the option to insert our own HTML code, but that's not really what we're after. We want to go here choose an HTML template and then we want to go over here free apps and click on website we want to select use website app then we want to do is come back to our squeeze page copy this URL come back here just paste it in there that's pretty much it we can select to remove scroll bars or we can leave that. Let's just leave that. Users are not going to see this admin panel here that we're see seeing. It says Howdy Admin Edit Page. Optimize Press New. They're not going to see that. This is what they're going to see. Just this page. So let's go ahead and click Save and Publish. But first, we can actually preview the tab, which is pretty much what we've already done. But preview it one more time. Okay, looks a little big. Let's go back and publish it. Let's see if maybe we need to make some changes to make it look a little better. Okay, so it's published and we can view it in Facebook. Let's see what this looks like. So it does look a little bit off because the image is too big. Let's click again on Edit tab and see if there's something we can do to change this. We can actually just click Remove Scroll Bars and I think then it would center it for us. So like this and Height, we can also adjust the height if we want to and the width. That's pretty cool. So I think I'm going to make this just like that. Okay, so Let's try to save this and view tab in Facebook again. Let's see if this time it looks better. Actually, we want to view tab as a visitor. Open visitor mode. And here we go. Now, it looks a lot better. So, all you need to do is change the width and height over here. And you're going to have a perfectly good looking squeeze page on Facebook. You want to send people to this squeeze page once you start running ads. And it's a really great way that's going to help you get cheaper ads. So that's a big plus. There's just one more thing that I need to show you. If we go back to this page, let me close everything I have so far so we can just focus on this. Over here, you're going to see the welcome image. It just says welcome and a star. We want to change that so all the tabs that you're going to add are going to be here. We do want to change this welcome tab. So let's just click on it and find the option to change it. So edit tab. Okay, look here. We just need to click on settings, then tab name. We can easily change it, but it does require us to log in with Facebook. I'm not sure why they think we're not logged in. Anyway, we'll just click on login and click OK. Yeah, OK. So tab name, lose belly fat. We're going to save the tab name. We can also upload a custom icon. I'm going to pause the video while I upload one of these icons. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Setting up this icon is not really that simple. It's not difficult, but you do have to go through a couple of steps. We need to go here to the developer tool. We need to authorize this 
and register as a developer. Okay, so I'm going to enter my password. All right, now we do need to take a few steps over here to verify everything. I'm going to have to verify my phone number, which is going to take a few seconds. Just waiting to receive a message. Okay, here we go. 4345. And let's confirm it. We don't really want to share our phone number, so only me and I don't need to turn text notifications. I'm just going to continue again. What's your role or title? Let's see if I can skip this. Okay, it looks like I can. I was just going to skip this. Now we need to build our integration. Now this is done. Let's come back over here. Step two would be to create the app. Step one is actually creating the app, but because we didn't have a developer account, we didn't have this as step one. So now it's the app that we need to create. So squeeze page, app name, space, belly fat, squeeze page. App category, let's see, health and fitness. Oh, this one doesn't work. So belly fat sq page let's see if that works okay available health and fitness that's good and let's click continue then again we have these numbers that we need to type nine six well this is really tiny but i think it's one three two one all right so we're close to setting up the app let's come back over here and see what else we need to do we need to grab the app id and app secret which is over here i'm just going to press command plus c to copy and paste it command v and then app secret i'm also going to copy and paste next we've got the page tab we need to scroll to the bottom and click page tab yeah, let's click page tab and then give the page tab a name. So belly fat loss. Page tab URL. For this, we need to come back over here and just grab the page tab URL. Secure page tab URL. Page tab image. Now we can select the image. Let's click on that. As you can see, the size of the image must be 111 by 74. I'm going to choose a file and pause the video while I do that. I'll be back. All right, so this is the image that I'm going to go with. I'm just going to click Normal and then Save Changes. Okay, so that's it. Let's just click Save again and then Activate Custom Icon. This is actually quite a bit of a process. It took a bit of time to get this simple icon over there. When I first did this, I thought it was going to be just simple, like upload an icon and it's done. But it actually took a little bit more time. As you can see, it looks pretty good now. A lot better than this star over here. So our mission is now done and we have a squeeze page up and running on Facebook. As you can see, it was very simple. You didn't have to hire any programmer or spend a lot of money having it created. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to use the custom audiences we've extracted earlier and how to start an advertising and targeting the right audience. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, awesome. You've made it this far. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create an ad and how to get ready for advertising. That's actually quite simple to do. You just need a couple of steps in order to achieve success for that, but it's not difficult. The good thing about it is that nobody is really good at it. Nobody can come out and create an advertisement that just kills it. It doesn't matter if you're a marketing expert or if you're just starting out. You need to test different ads in order to get good results. That's really the key with Facebook. You just need to keep testing 
until you can get your ads to cost just a couple of cents per click because that's the goal. If you pay just a couple of cents per click for your ad, then you're going to get cheap and targeted traffic and you'll be able to convert a lot of that traffic into sales. The goal with these ads is to create one that people will click on. We want people to click a lot on our ads. That's actually the goal. If our ad is nice and people like it and people click on it, then Facebook is going to reward us by lowering the amount we pay per click. The same thing is valid for AdWords. Of course, AdWords now costs a lot more than Facebook. With Facebook, it's just important to make sure people like your ad and they click on it because then, as I already said, Facebook is going to reward you by lowering the amount you pay per click. So that's our goal and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Before we get any further, we need to take a look at how to create the very first ad. First, you're going to have to just open up the page, your fan page, or you could just type over here, advertising, and then it's going to appear advertising on Facebook. So you could do that and it's going to open pretty much your ads manager. You can also just click on that ads manager icon and end up with a brand new account that I'm going to show you. I'm going to get started with this green button, create an ad, and I'm going to click on that. We're going to create our first ad. What we want to promote would be either our belly fat weight loss page, or we can also promote our squeeze page. Let me show you how you would do that. I'm going to open Facebook and then open this page over here. If we scroll down, this is our squeeze page. We would just copy the link for this squeeze page. We'll just copy the link for the squeeze page that we created a while back and we'll just paste it over there. We want to promote our squeeze page. Now we could also promote this page without promoting your Facebook tab and just directly through the squeeze page link directly. However, if we do that, Facebook is not really going to reward us that much. Even though Facebook does not say this publicly, we have noticed that Facebook is lowering the amount you pay per click if you keep the traffic inside of Facebook. So if you do that, Facebook is really going to reward you. Now, let me check the ID of this app. I just need to copy the ID over here. There we go. Okay, so this is the URL that we want to send them to. We can select if we want to get new users and so your ad will show up to people who are more likely to install your app. We just need to check out our squeeze page. There's nothing really to install. We could also show this to existing users and encourage them to become more active, but we want to get new users. So let's click on that. Next, we need to upload an image. So it needs to be 100 pixels by 72. Let's see if we have something here from the library. Nothing really. So I'm just going to pause this video, pick up a couple of images, then put them over here. I'm going to show you how to get this thing done. Okay, so now I have these four images uploaded. I'm going to remove this one because it's not really related. So now we have four images that I resized. I also added this little border, as you can see. The border is now blue in this two. I also have two with the red border. I'm going to go with this one. There's actually a video later on which I'm going to show you how to create these ad images easily. So I'm going to go with this one or maybe with this one. Yeah, I think this one is better. Now I'm going to click done. Here we go. So these are our images. Actually, they're going to do more ads in our campaign. As you can see, you can click why and they pretty much explain why they do this, but they don't really do that. Basically, they want to help you split test and 
they want to help you test and see what people are going to react to. So you can just select a couple. Now I'll select this one. So if I want to select just one, then I can remove the rest. Now, if we want to go with two, then maybe I could remove the rest. Or if we want to go with three, then we could just keep these. For now, let's just keep these and then move on to the headline. So for the headline, we want to come up with something that is appealing and maybe a little bit shocking. The good thing about it is that you can use some other websites to figure this thing out. You can go to google.com.uk or you can also go to the US version of Google. That doesn't really matter. Then you want to search for weight loss. You want to check out the ads on these pages. The reason why these pages, these ads are at the very top of Google is because they have tested these ads and headlines and they are proven to convert and give results. That's why you want to take a look at these ads and you want to steal their ideas pretty much. So we've got guaranteed weight loss, fast weight loss, want to lose weight fast. We could go with one of these, want to lose weight fast. That's perfect. Fits in there perfectly fine. Now you can see the number of characters left. If we want to add like another word faster, you're going to see that we don't have enough characters left. We need to remove them so that we are either at zero or at a plus number. Now, let's see what we could do for the title. Okay, maybe you could put your name or maybe like this. I don't know. Maybe something related to your experience. X Fatty reveals how he lost 12 pounds in three weeks with no diet and no strict workouts. So something like that. Obviously, you need to test. This is not the only one you want to go with. You want to test a couple of different headlines and a couple of different descriptions. So here you go. This is what these pages would look like. Now, this other image that appeared over here, we want to remove that. Okay, this is better. For some reason, this did not update right away. Usually, it does, but in this case, it didn't. Just a couple of seconds ago, you saw that it just said use app, but now this works properly. So I guess Facebook just needed a little bit of time to update the link that we posted at the very beginning. When we started creating this ad, now we can see what this page looks like in the newsfeed. This is what it would look like in the newsfeed. And we can also see what it looks like in the right column. That's pretty good. Now, we also have the option to select sponsor stories. If we want to help people discover your business through their friends, that's okay because it's something like weight loss and a lot of people have that problem. So it's okay to leave this on. It basically means that if somebody likes your page, their friends are going to see that they liked it. Consequently, their friends can also land on your squeeze page and on your fan page because they saw their friend liking it, recommending it. It's basically just a wider reach. It also reaches people who are interested in weight loss and those people who are initially targeting. So that would be it for this part over here about creating your ad. Now, the next part that we want to tackle is the audience, what we want to play with. Basically, the new philosophy about getting these really cheap clicks is not to target people using what Facebook tells you. Marketers have done this a lot lately. They have tried to create these audiences by targeting by location, age, gender, and then precise interests. They've gotten good results, but the latest thing that really changed things around a lot was the appearance of custom audiences that we talked about earlier. If we were to select custom audiences like that and a couple of these custom audience groups, we would get an audience that is incredibly targeted. When we select just women from ages 20 to 45, then the problem for us would be that we don't really know if these people are interested in losing weight. 
if we target custom audiences. These audiences. If you remember, and you should remember if you watched our previous videos, are created from groups that are related to weight loss. We've extracted everybody who liked wheat belly. And now these people are in fact interested in losing weight. So we want to target by age and we could go to 20 to no maximum. As you can see, this group is quite small, just 360 people. But as I explained, you do want to extract multiple custom audiences. Pretty much you want to extract from all the groups that you can find on Facebook. Once you start extracting like 10 of these groups, your audience starts growing and then you're going to reach out to more and more people. However, what I do recommend doing is reaching out to small groups of people. Now, one of your ads should only target like maybe from a thousand to 5,000 people. You shouldn't go too big. Never target 10,000 people at once in one group. If you go from 1,000 to 5,000 people, you're going to get a better idea of what groups are better targets for you. For example, you might target wheat belly and you might also target another group that is called paleo diet. You may find out that wheat belly group actually makes more money and gets you more traffic. Hence, that's the group that you want to focus on and you want to drop the paleo group. Now, if you target all of your custom audience groups into one ad, then you'd not really know what ad is really performing well and what custom audience group is doing the best. You can't really scale things up and start drilling down and really getting to know your audience when it's so big. So that's why I recommend going with smaller groups from a thousand people to maybe 5,000 people. Now, in this case, we don't have a thousand people because we just uploaded one of these custom audiences. But that's okay for this example. It's perfectly fine. When it comes to the location, you can also target United Kingdom. This audience number is supposed to grow. Maybe this group doesn't really have people from the United Kingdom. That's why it didn't grow. As you can see from Australia, look, number went from 360 to 440. We do want to target similar countries, English speaking countries for our audience. If we go with some European countries like Norway, that doesn't really increase this number. So our main target is United States, United Kingdom, Australia, perhaps New Zealand. We can also target other countries, but as you can see, the audience really isn't growing. Most of these groups are probably better off with just you as traffic. So let's go with the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. Maybe I miss some countries that are mainly English speaking, maybe Canada, we should get a couple more people in our audience if we target Canada. So yeah, we've got 500. That's pretty good. All the traffic from these countries is pretty high targeted. And also, these are people who do have money. It's not like we're targeting a country with people who are not going to buy. All these countries are good countries to target. Now that we've done with that, we're not going to do anything with precise interest because we're going with custom audiences. That's the whole philosophy behind getting these low clicks because it's different. With custom audience, it's actually easier to get cheaper clicks. Connections. We don't really care about this, but we could say only people not connected to belly fat weight loss. That means only people who have not liked your page yet. Now, we could also say anyone. Basically, for promoting a new squeeze page, it's not going to hurt if we also target people who already liked our page. So, anyone or only people not connected to our fan page. Both options are okay. I guess you need to think about it. If it's a new squeeze page you're promoting, then anyone will do. Friends or connections. No, we, we don't really want to touch this. Interested in, we don't really care about that. Relationship status, we don't really care about this either. Languages, we could say English, but usually when I select these countries, I just leave it as is. It's not going to hurt if you just put in there English, US, English, UK. That's all right if we keep that in there. Education, at this point, I don't think we really care for this niche. 
education said to anyone is just fine. That's it for this video. We talked a little bit about how to create your ad, how to create these images, and how to craft the headlines. Now, the best way of doing that is to just go on Google and modeling these ads over here. People pay so much for these ads and for the clicks that they're getting. They have tested and proven their ads. So if we just model their ads, then we're gonna get good results without having to fail so much ourselves. That's always a good way of finding out what works before you actually start launching your ads. We also talked about creating your audience and I explained how custom audiences work. In this discussion, we only had one group. If you do add more groups and you can get your audience from a thousand people to five thousand people for one of the ads, then that's actually pretty good. You're going to have a pretty big audience, but also it's going to be pretty highly targeted if you extract the custom audiences correctly. I explained that in one of the previous videos. In the next video, we're going to take a look at campaign, pricing, and schedule. For now, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to record the parts of the next video. I think it's easier if I just break the topic down into two videos. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. All right. So now we need to take a really quick look. This video is going to be quick and we want to take a look at campaign, pricing, and schedule and explain a little bit what to expect when you get to this stage. First, we've got the account currency. You just need to select that. And then the account country and time zone. Then you need to give your new campaign a name. Nobody's going to see this and it's just for you. So make sure you give it a name that can help you keep things organized. Usually, I just give this the name of my page. So belly fat weight loss and then squeeze page number one something like that then we've got the campaign budget we can select if we want to give this campaign a per day budget or lifetime budget usually what i do when i start out new campaigns i start with 15 dollars to 20 dollars per day i don't do lifetime budget I do this on a per day basis. $10 is okay if you're just starting out. You don't need to go crazy and spend $25 to $50 per day. $10 a day is enough to see if your campaign is going to start getting the results or not. Next, we've got campaign schedule. Usually, I don't really set a start and end date. I just run the campaign continuously and I keep my eye on this campaign all the time. I don't really let it just go. When you just started things out, when you have to keep an eye on your campaigns, if you know that you're not going to be available for a couple of days, then you might want to give the campaign maybe just three days to run. In that case, you won't spend more than $30 for those three days. That's completely fine as well. You could also do that. If you just forgot to monitor campaigns, you just give them like three to five days to run and then you can come back and check. If the campaign is doing fine, then you can give it more time and expand it. You can also do that. If you set an end date, it's not set in stone. You can always reactivate your ad, of course. So it's not the end of the world. If it's doing well and it ends, you simply reactivate it and no problem. So these are two options. If you think you're going to be able to keep an eye on these campaigns throughout the day, then that's okay. If not, then just give it three to five days to run and come back and check on it later when you can. I want to go with run my campaign continuously starting today. Now we've got pricing. They say you will be charged every time someone sees your ad or sponsored story. We can change this. If you want, you can optimize your bid to get more likes. You can optimize for clicks or optimize for impressions. I don't really go with your bid will be optimized to get more likes. I go with either clicks or impressions. Actually, I go with impressions first. I just select impressions 
As you can see, this is the price per thousand impressions. If your ad is good, if it stands out, then it's going to get a lot of clicks from these impressions and that's when Facebook rewards you with a low price per click. Now, as you can see, their suggested bid is from 13 to 62 cents. Usually what I do is just beat the suggested bid, the highest one, by about 10 cents. So I would do 72 cents. Now, that doesn't mean you're gonna pay that much per click, but it just kinda tells Facebook you're serious about it and you're willing to pay. They're gonna give you a little bit of an advantage over people who are also advertising and targeting your audience. They're gonna give you a little bit of an advantage and this is always good because it starts getting you clicks quite fast in the beginning. That's what you actually need. In the beginning, you wanna get as many clicks as possible so that you can see if this campaign is something worth pursuing or if you should pause and delete it. That's why I just go with 10 cents more than the highest bid suggested. Again, it doesn't mean I'm gonna pay 72 cents per click. Actually, I never do that. Maybe you're gonna end up paying like 20 to 30 cents per click. If you see that it's not working out, you simply pause and that's it. So it's not like you're gonna end up paying 72 cents for a thousand clicks. That's not gonna happen. If it's not working out well, you just pause it and you're done. Once you're done with this, you just click review order and then you can just confirm your ad name, your audience, click place order, and that's it. I think I've not linked any payment methods in this account, so I'm gonna to have to do that once I click place order. You're gonna to wanna to do that too if you haven't. So yeah, you can do that with credit card, PayPal, or direct debit. You can also redeem a coupon if you have it. Now, I don't have that, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my credit card, but there's no reason for you to stick around while I do that, because that's pretty straightforward. There's no need for me to show you how to do that. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how I made those neat Facebook ad pictures, images actually. I'm talking about how I just downloaded some big images and how I shrunk them down a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next video. I'll see you there. Okay, so in this video, I wanna show you how to create these images that I created for my Facebook advertisement. It's really easy to do, and you can do it with the help of an online tool. You don't need Photoshop. You don't need anything like that. You don't need to spend money on anything like that. This website called PickResize.com can do the trick. It's actually pretty efficient. I already grabbed one of the images that I want to convert. You can just click Browse and then select the image from your computer, which I already did to save a little bit of time. So now I'm gonna click Continue and we're gonna have some options over here. Now, when it comes to these options, I guess they're a little bit tricky in the beginning if you don't know exactly what you're doing. We're gonna to have to actually resize this image twice and I'm gonna explain why. The first time we do this, I just go with 75% smaller and I also like to select frame border. I wanna add a frame. Let's go ahead and try this with 20 pixels and I'm going to select frame color. I'm gonna go with red. I'm just going to click, I'm done, resize my picture. Now, obviously, this is a lot bigger than the picture we want for our Facebook ad. As you can see, the size is 652, and that's quite big, and this is supposed to be your image. The reason why we make it bigger than what we need is so that we can handle this border correctly. Let's go back to this site, and I'm gonna grab that same photo. I'm just gonna paste it over there. Now, let's click Continue. I'm gonna show you what happens if we resize this image to the Facebook size right away. The border is gonna to be too big, and that's not something we want. I'm gonna show you why. Unfortunately, this website only allows us to choose a border of 10 pixels. That's the smallest border we can choose. If we do that, it's gonna add 10 pixels everywhere. 
So in order for our photo to look good, we would need to resize it by 20 pixels less than the Facebook size. The Facebook size is 100 by 72. It can be smaller than that, but I don't recommend going smaller at all. In order for us to add this border correctly, we need to go to 80 and 52. Once we did that, we select frame, border, and pixels. We can just leave this color. This is just an example. So as you can see now, the size is 100 by 72. If we view the image, you're going to see that the border, it's really huge, like really, really big. And that's not something we want. In order to avoid that, I just resized the image as I just did earlier. So I resized it at 75%. And then I'm going to grab this photo that I resized. And I'm going to drop it over there. Now it looks like I can't drop it. Okay, no problem. I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. Then I'm going to grab it from here and I'm going to drop it. Okay, that works. Now I'm going to click continue again. This image is actually the image that we created earlier. So we went with 75% and then added a border of 10 pixels, right? Actually, we had the border of 20 pixels. So that's even better. Now, what we want to do is just resize it to a custom size. And we just need to type 100 by 72. So we don't need to add anything else because we already did that. So I'm just going to click, I'm done, resize my picture. I'm going to view the image. As you can see, the border now looks perfectly fine. This is a lot better than the picture we saw earlier with a really huge border. That's not something we want. We do want a border, but we don't want to waste too much of our picture space with a border. So that's how you create these Facebook ads with borders. It's really simple. The best thing about it is that you don't need Photoshop. You don't need to be good with photo manipulation or anything. All you need is this website, pickresize.com. If you want to get these super cheap images that you can use like the ones I got, you can just go to a website called depositphotos.com and they give really cheap photos. I think for like a dollar you can get one photo. If you buy subscriptions, then you can do even better. I think for like $10, you could probably get 15 to 20 photos with a subscription plan. This is the website, depositphotos.com. If you search on Google for deposit photos discount or deposit photos coupon code, you're always going to find a coupon code for at least 15%, sometimes even 20%. So go ahead and do that. And then you're really going to get a real bargain with deposit photos. So that's it for this video. I want to thank you for checking out our videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you're going to put all of these to action and that you're going to start growing your Facebook campaign soon. Thanks once again and the best of luck with your Facebook campaigns.